Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to what is going to be one of the more unique videos uh, that I've ever recorded on the Gotham Chess YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to be touching on several things. We're going to be reacting to a couple of things that Magnus Carlsen, arguable greatest chess player of all time, has said about the future of chess. I'm also going to be talking about uh, what is likely the biggest existential threat and one of the major uh, issues pending in the chess world. And I will cover a lot of these issues, both as an insider of the game who does create a lot of content and is involved with a lot of the major parties, but also as a spectator and a fan. And I do urge you to, if you, those of you that have an attention span and will get through this video, uh, please comment. Let me know your thoughts. I will also have a poll on my YouTube channel under the community tab uh, for you to answer. And I do apologize for my voice. I think I probably have laryngitis right now. My voice box is in flame, but we're going to get through this together. Okay. Uh, the two seconds, the two second summary of this, uh, two sentence summary of this video is chess has a major disconnect in top level and regular spectator perceptions of the game. And we have an unclear circuit. We have a world championship title that doesn't really matter. We have too many tournaments organized by too many people. And we don't know if we want to play fast chess or slow chess. Now, this all begins many years ago, and it all starts with Magnus Carlsen. Magnus Carlsen has voiced what he thinks the world championship should be. Let's listen. I don't know. What, what is the goal of the world championship? Is it, to, um, is it to showcase the best in the world? And, and, uh, and the general thought is that the one who wins the world championship is the best player in the world? Um, I mean Yes, and a little bit later in this video, he said this. Just as much of a valid form, to some extent, uh, rapid chess especially, and, all, and to some extent also blitz is uh, just as much of a valid form of chess as, as classical. And Keep in mind, this is 2018. Now, 2024. This is Magnus Carlsen's vision for the game. And that's one of the visions that I have for the future, that there will be more um, fish random chess or other variants for classical, and that regular chess will be more rapid and blitz, which I think it's better, better suited for. Classical time control for fish random, and that other than that, you envision faster chess, basically. Faster chess is, is, the, is the future. Now, Essentially, the argument is classical chess is getting more and more obsolete, rapid and blitz chess, and just in general, modernizing the game of chess to play things like Fisher Random, which is a random shuffled back row of pieces, is the future. But <clears throat> while Magnus Carlsen is a star, it's not just going to be a case of, well, this is what Magnus wants, so we're going to do it. So I've laid this out in a Google document, all right? It's kind of ugly. But bear with me, uh, and I will actually close this, and I guess we can even, yeah, we, we can centralize this a little bit. So, this is what I have outlined. Now, caveat, you don't have to agree with everything here. It's not my point. My point is I'm spelling out certain problems that we have and potential solutions. To me, and maybe you feel the same way, the top chess event cycle the cycle of top tournaments during the year in chess is impossible to follow. You have no idea which tournament matters more than another. There are too many tournaments. And one by one, the World Chess Championship and the candidate cycle are outdated practices and they should be replaced. Why do we have an eight player tournament once every two years? It's been more frequent recently because of COVID, but why do we have a candidates with a completely ridiculous and unclear qualification system that changes every cycle to then challenge for a one-on-one -on -one World Chess Championship? We have a one-on-one -on -one match format. We have like a boxing or a UFC format, but then the other tournaments don't even mean anything. This is an outdated format in my opinion, so outdated, Magnus Carlsen doesn't even want to participate in it, but 
that's still considered the ultimate thing. And the International Chess Federation, aka FIDE, still controls the World Chess Championship cycle. They have controlled it for, I don't know, 70, 80 years. All right? That's how it works. And that's how it's organized. And it's kind of a, you know, where's it going to be every single year? And what's the qualification system? Now, chess events are too long. Every day they're too long. The games are too long. The event itself is too long because it's like three weeks, but that's actually not the worst part. And that makes them not commercially viable and unattractive to sponsors. Now, that might mean nothing to you, all right? Because you're not a top player. You don't care. You're like, I like when the game is seven hours long. But the reality of the situation is every sports event is three to four hours long. Except, you know, maybe cricket, right? Cricket, I know, takes a, a long time. But most sports events on television are three to four hours, with exceptions. And they're allowed to go longer because there's commercials. You can run commercials, right? At the end of the day, that's the ecosystem. A chess event running eight hours is not commercially viable. And we're going to get back to the document because my follow-up to that is as follows. Back in the day, oh, they needed the time. They needed two hours. But now opening preparation has reached a level. There's no skill involved in the first 20 moves of the game. So you get these players who play three hours each, but they're not even using any time in the beginning. Back in the day, nobody knew any openings. There was no computers. But with top level analysis, the weakest grandmaster can equalize against the strongest grandmaster by the 15th move of the game. And then we have to play chess. Also another problem, chess events have been invitation only for a long time. So like, if you're a top junior in a random place in the world, there's a chance you won't even get invited. Most events are invitation only, and there's too many events. And we're going to get into this in a second, because we have the World Championship, we have the Weissen House uh, Freestyle Chess, which was just organized, which inspired this video. We have the Grand Chess Tour, organized by the St. Louis Chess Club. And then we have the Global Chess League, all right? And on top of that, we got all the chess.com events. Title Tuesday, Champions Chess Tour, I mean, you name it, Pro Chess League, which has been discontinued. We have too many people organizing too many events. That's, that's, this is an issue. Now let's talk about it, all right? You may not think, you may not agree with this, you may not agree with this, but there's several solutions, all right? We can create a system like tennis. There is no such thing as a world champion. We have a circuit of tournaments every year, some more valuable than others. Tata Steel may be more valuable, some prestigious opens more valuable. Drop the invitational format, knockout system, or just a round by round system, maybe not a knockout system, but this is just how it works, all right? By the way, one thing I haven't even covered here, we have a tournament in chess called World Cup. Like, we have a tournament called the World Cup. Like, on top of all of this, we got a World Cup and a World Championship. Bro, it doesn't even make any sense. Anyway, create a system like tennis. There's an ELO. There's a point value assigned to every tournament. That's the way we crown who's the best chess player in the world. If there's a way to do that, that might be the best way. We can speed up regular chess with a focus on rapid and Armageddon tie breaks like the Champions Chess Tour. Rapid chess plus Armageddon. Or we could do classical chess, and if you draw the game, which you probably will, then you break the tie with an Armageddon, which is what they do in Norway chess, where white gets 10 minutes and black gets seven, and that's the way they, they change up the standings. Or the thing that inspired this entire video, freestyle chess, Fisher Random, Chess 960. So, February 2024 comes a major player into the world of chess. The Weissenhaus beautiful resort that hosted the G7 Summit. Look at this place. It doesn't even look real. And they organized an event called the Freestyle Goat Chess Challenge. And um, the format of the event was Chess 960. Meaning it was a shuffled back row of pieces drawn randomly every day. Players don't know any openings. The first part of the tournament was rapid, fast chess, determining the seating. And then they played a classical knockout. Okay? Now, a couple of things about this event. Theoretically, and it was organized by uh, the owner of the resort, uh, whose name I will probably pronounce incorrectly, Jan-Henrik Butner. 
German entrepreneur, owner of the resort. Like I said, they hosted the G7s. Like they've hosted world leaders. They know hospitality. Beautiful event. Players dressed in custom suits. All right, players driven to their games by BMW, which was a sponsor, partner uh, of the event. All this is beautiful. Theoretically, the budget and the hospitality for these players, unlimited. They should be treated really, really well. Then they had certain features in the event itself, uh, a mix of formats. Then they would have something like a confession booth, which has been done before. Players go into a secret room. They tell you their thoughts while the game is going on, right? They have heart monitors, this insight into the players. What else did they have? Uh, they had a lot of media. They made them do a lot of interesting interviews. They, the, the players get to collaborate on the position. So imagine a brand new chess position. Nobody knows anything about it. You got players analyzing the game before it's even possible, like discussing potential openings. That's all very interesting stuff. Surprise, surprise, it was won by Magnus Carlsen, right? But that format, I'm not sure is sustainable. What I'm going to say is it's not, <clears throat> I don't think it's here as a replacement. I don't think freestyle chess or Fisher Random can replace chess, period. Because at the end of the day, if you want, did, by the way, did you guys enjoy Chess 960? Is it something you liked watching but not playing yourself? What I, what I mean by that is this is the disconnect. Top level players, tired of openings, tired of long time control, tired, tired, tired. But we love openings. We don't experience that. If you're 1200, you love chess. You love it. You don't, you don't, it's, it's, it's completely different than something like tennis because I like tennis. I'm like 700 at tennis. I love tennis. I'm, and, and the top players aren't tired of tennis. They love tennis. Tennis is tennis. Chess openings are more boring than tennis. How about Formula One? Nobody knows how to drive a race car, but everybody watches Formula One. So I don't think chess 960 or freestyle chess will replace chess in the traditional sense. But if we just add it on to the circuit of events, I think it definitely has a home. I think Freestyle Chess and the Weissenhaus team did an incredible job creating all this media around the players, you know, putting them in these luxurious conditions. And hey, if I'm a part of the next one, call me guys, seriously, hit me up. Like, that's great, like, let's do it. But herein lies the problem. This is a totally random event that popped out of nowhere. Last year, we had an event called Global Chess League, organized by Anand Mahindra, who's an who's a, uh, entrepreneur from India. This was an event that was organized in Dubai. The format was a team event. <clears throat> it was really interesting. All right, you had all these teams from India. Trivani, Upgrad, like, I, I didn't even, I, I barely could follow this event because I didn't understand anything that was going on. So you have another event, totally random. Totally random event that happened, but it was big. The Indian audience really enjoyed it, and it was organized by, by, by Mahindra. And I don't know if this is coming back. I, 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 see, I can speak about the Weissenhaus event because I watched it. I, I could barely follow along this event. I didn't quite understand what was going on. If I don't understand what's going on, the general audience definitely doesn't either. We need to centralize this stuff. We have to do something where they're, like, it's very clear what fans can look forward to every single year. That's just my opinion. We also have something that's been going on for years, the Grand Chess Tour. This has been getting organized by the St. Louis Chess Club for like a decade. And every year they have tournaments around the world. This is an invitational tournament. One of the major problems of chess is that they are all invitational. Invitational meaning you have to maintain your status as a top 10 player in the world to get invited to the Grand Chess Tour. And now we have dates here and here and here. We also now have to worry about Weissenhaus, which is going to have multiple events in a year. We're going to have to worry about maybe the Global Chess League is going to come back. Champions Chess Tour is going to come back. This is the problem. Do you understand my point? This is the problem. And while all of this is happening, we got this. What relevance does this even have anymore? If you become the world champion of chess, you might win less money than if you're a professional player who competes and wins some of these other events. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. There's too many events. It's so hard to follow. Now, 
let's talk about the formats again. All right? Let's deep dive some of these things. Okay? Why is there such a need to change anything? Well, like I said, one of the hypotheses is, why are you changing anything? And we're stuck in our traditions. Let's just do things the way we always have. It's not 1970. It's just not. The truth is, chess players, in my opinion, top chess players don't know their commercial worth. They don't know it. You should want your favorite chess players to earn money, to earn a lot of money. You should want sponsors to sponsor your favorite chess player. Because the more sponsors there are for top athletes, the more you can develop chess in countries. This is how it works. Norway has an entire TV station dedicated to Magnus Carlsen because he's so good. Can you imagine being a number one player in another country and you have a TV station backing you? This should be more of the standard. There should be academies in countries to develop the next wave of chess talent. We should not rely only on billionaire philanthropy. And by the way, down that list, this organized by philanthropy. You know, Anand Mahindra, he's a billionaire entrepreneur. Rex Singfield organizes the St. Louis Chess Club. Billionaire philanthropists trying to grow the game. That, they have done a tremendous job, but the more you make something sustainable in the long run and bring in sponsors, so these guys don't have to pay out of pocket. Jan Henrik Butner to organize the Weissenhaus event probably paid millions. I don't know, I haven't asked him how much money he spent, but, but we can't just rely on that. What they're doing is incredible, but we, we also need to find a way to build for the future. I would love to see a future where freestyle chess has multiple events on the calendar and we know in advance and we know who's playing and if they want to do an invitational, fine. You organize the event, do the invitational. But in tennis, there's no invitational. There's a qualification system. Once you start doing invitationals in chess, you mess with the overall standings. Tennis doesn't have any invitationals that count for the world rankings. So that's kind of a conundrum, that's kind of a problem. If we just wanna have more of these kind of small, private, really prestigious events, maybe that's just what we have to do. Maybe there is no way around that. At the end of the day, we also have a world championship title that is literally meaningless. I mean, it's not, it's not literally meaningless. There's a world champion, but everybody's going around going, well, that guy's the champion and he's playing in all these other events. Do you see what my point is? This is the issue. We have no clarity. Is top level classical chess a dying thing of the past? I don't know if it's dying. The Tata Steel chess tournament that just concluded was truly really great. However, if you tell me, hey, chess players and broadcasts can have a sponsor come in, partner with the event, Put the event on television. I would say, yeah, let's speed it up a little bit. Let's speed it up a little bit. If the North Star of chess, if the top goal of chess is play the game as perfectly as possible, that does not mix with appeal to wider audience. That does not appeal with commercial viability, that does not appeal with behind the scenes footage, documentary style footage, your favorite players getting interviews and media slots. People don't want to watch something that takes seven hours. And there's people in the chess world who say, well, screw those people because we don't want to, den we don't want to lower the level of the game. My point is, Chess players don't need two hours anymore. They used to need two hours. If you're going to give them two hours, have them play freestyle chess. Have them play a format where they don't know the openings. But if you're not going to do that, speed the game up. I'm not talking from three hours to 15 minutes, maybe 25 minutes. But what I want, my dream in chess, 
is for companies and media to care about the top players and for there to be an ecosystem for these folks, for them to be sponsored athletes, for us to be able to build the next wave of chess prodigies, for kids who are interested in chess at the age of nine to not want and are really good to not quit to then go to college. Every day, people around the world look up to athletes, all right? All athletes, all athletes in any sport, and they see that per person paved the way. I'm going to go train really hard. I'm going to go play in tournaments. I want to be really, really good, just like that person, and I want to be the best. And in chess, it just stops. Like, it just stops. There are so many good players, ages 8, 9, 10, 11, whose parents are like, you're really good, but go pursue a career in medicine. Go be a banker. Go be this. Go be that. Go to school. And we're limiting ourselves because we are stuck in our own ways, in our own traditions. That's just the reality. And I go back to this every single time. One of the biggest counterpoints to all of this is, Gotham, you just want more people in the game because you want more views and you want people to buy your courses. And I cannot stress this enough. You're right. No, I'm joking. My increase of views and etc. and all of this will be nowhere near as much as the player salaries and opportunities can grow for some of these people, the people playing the game itself. I'm just telling you, that's just how it is. They get sponsored by BMW, they get sponsored by a watch company, and they go to these events and they participate. Like, this would be, this would be groundbreaking. But right now, the major problem is we just have random events popping up left and right. We don't even know what to watch. We don't know what's important anymore. We're just kind of sitting there going, oh, this is cool. Like, I watched this freestyle chess, and I was like, wow, this is really cool. A lot of the top players said, this is the most refreshing chess experience they've ever had in their life. But we can't just rely on the niceness of people like Jan Hendrik to fuel the chess world. He did a great thing. He made a lot of top players happy. But we can't only rely on that. There has to be some structure. There has to be something that we're playing for. We are in a really weird spot right now in the chess world. Really weird. Where the world championship doesn't mean anything. The candidates doesn't mean a whole lot. But we're still going to watch it. We're still going to cover it. Right? Classical chess is too slow, apparently. Not commercially viable. People don't want to sponsor chess. They don't want to get involved in the media side of chess because our events take seven hours long. What do you think? What do you want to see? What do you like to watch? Let me know in the comments. Do you agree with me that covering, uh, that following these tournaments that pop up all the time are a little bit difficult to follow unless I guide you through them? I don't know. I don't know what, the top, what, 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 what you guys think. And like I said in the beginning, what you think does not even match up to what the top players think. So we're in a weird spot. That's the summary. If I could snap my fingers and tomorrow we woke up and everything was different, I would have a tennis system. I would figure out a way for there to be Grand Slam style events. We could alternate. Regular chess, freestyle chess. Freestyle chess should be a part of chess moving forward, even for the world rankings. Like, there, has, there should be a way, because it really is a true determinant of how good you are at the game. That would be my solution. A circuit of events, world ranking system. I might pivot to, to a place where we, we don't have this world championship match. We don't have this one-on-one -on -one format. But... That's not what I control. I'm just here. I make recaps. And um, I'll continue to uh, ideate and iterate and think of what we can do for chess in the future. In the meantime, I will continue to cover, like I said, all those events as they keep popping up. I think uh, the organizer, Jan Henrik, said that the next one was coming to India. He made a video about it on the Chess Base India channel. They did tons of media there. It was great. It was excellent. Um, but I just want to organize this better. I want to be less confused about what chess events matter and what don't. I want them to stop being novelty dropped here and there. And I want some clarity and I want us to all come together on what we're even playing for in the World Championship crown. That's all I have for you today. Get out of here.